terrestrial television can submerge themselves in the survivor phenomenon by watching in interactive TV mode. Just press red on your digital remote control at any time during the program. Stay protected in your jungle. McLean's Complete Care Toothpaste. Sponsor Survivor. From the marina here at Kota Kinabalu, the capital of Sabah on the mysterious island of Borneo, you are witnessing eight men and eight women preparing for a five-hour journey. It's a journey that's only the beginning of an adventure that could well change their lives forever. several hours into the journey to the remote island of Pulau Tiga. The survivors are trying to rest, conserve their energy, and they'll need all the strength they have. They volunteered to be marooned for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the story of their survival. Incredibly, until five hours ago, the survivors hadn't even met each other. Even now, they're not allowed to talk to each other or know in which tribes they've been placed until they're cast overboard. In the end, only one will remain. And the reward for the ultimate survivor, one million pounds in cash. been divided into two tribes and they now just have two minutes to salvage what they can from this boat. It's the first time they've been allowed to communicate with each other since they came together some five hours ago. For the next 40 days and 40 nights they will be marooned on this beautiful but potentially dangerous island here in the South China Sea. 16 people forced to band together. And they better adapt quickly, not only to the island, but also to each other. Because, and here's the critical thing, every three days, one of them will be voted off the island by their fellow participants. From the boat, they've salvaged what they can, the bare essentials they'll need for survival, including an axe, a machete, water containers, cooking pan, fishing baskets, nets and line. Anything they've left on board is now lost to them. To eat, each tribe has been given one tin of fruit, one tin of corned beef, and enough rice for 40 days and 40 nights. As individuals, they're allowed one non-practical personal item. The Ula, or snake tribe, consists of Pete, a model and actor from Cheshire. Zoe, a bar worker from London. Richard, a fellow in clinical psychiatry from Cardiff. 
Eve, a project manager from Oxfordshire. Jackie, a purchaser in the airline industry from Surrey. Nick, a drugs company manager from the Midlands. Sarah, a model from southwest London. And Mick, a retired policeman from Dartford. We dropped the survivors about three nautical miles from the island. The journey should take an hour, but with the currents and tides as they are at the moment, they'll have to battle hard to reach their beaches marked by flags. The Halang or Eagle tribe consists of Adrian, a barrister's clerk from Kent. Usmar, a children's nursery owner from Yorkshire. Simon, a financial sales manager from Birmingham. Jennifer or JJ, a PA from South Wales. James, a property developer from London. Jane, a massage therapist from Sussex. Andy, a long-haul pilot from Northampton. And Charlotte, a detective constable from Glamorgan. It's not only survival skills they need, it's social skills as well, because the impression they make on their fellow participants could well decide their fate. As I say, every three days, someone will be voted off this island. They have to survive that vote. They have to survive the island. They have to survive each other. And ultimately, they can trust no one. And it's worth remembering here, they'd never spoken to each other before they were cast overboard. Now they are ashore on their designated beaches, they really have to pull together. Tiga is an island of jungle and beaches where the flora and fauna is protected by the Saba government. No one's allowed to cut any of this. So we've had to make sure their beaches are equipped with the materials necessary to build shelter. Things like bamboo and a local material for roofing known as atap. Apart from that, they're on their own. The island's climate is hostile and unforgiving. With temperatures and humidity in the high 90s, any physical work soon becomes strenuous and draining. Well, this is where we're going to camp up. Yes. Behind it, I've checked the water. It's salt water. Because at first I thought it was going to be a problem with mozzies. Oh, right. But it's a splash over. If you look at oh, high okay. tide, the light is actually clear and aligned with us here. So we do need to be on the ramp. Which is between the two flags. It's between the two flags. We are going to build between the flags, right? What we need now is find real long bits of bamboo. Right. OK? Yeah. a lot more my size. I suggest we do an A-frame to begin with. Yeah. Okay, we can adapt it as the days go by, but it's going to be about six and a half foot at the bottom. Okay, running through eight times two, about 16, about 10, about 12 feet. I'm very glad someone took over and I felt quite good when Nick, like, he just suddenly, like, got us all together. I'm at home. <laughs> As you knew I would be. Mick and I are going to start on the A-frame, OK? Can you start ferrying the building materials up? I'm just pretending to do things now. I'm worn out. <laughs> yeah, we need to go. That way. 
Okay, yeah, we're going to go this way, so we've got a little bit of the offshore breeze. Okay, now this is going to be our A frame. Yeah. Nick comes across immediately as an obvious leader. He's got a lot of skills. He can, uh, <coughs> he can motivate people and, and praise them when they've done something good, so he's very good at that. That's it, that's good, that's good, yeah. Nice and tight. Looking through there, yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Right. Okay, put it tight. Put it up the ceiling, up the ceiling. That way, that's it, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the boat and then just as about to go in, Nick just suddenly announces that he's this um, scuba ace from the Navy, so everybody just... OK, fair enough. He sort of took charge from there and has stayed in charge. Certainly I think as far as he's concerned. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to sit down and feel a bit of pain. Yeah, Got some more water? Yeah, yeah I just feel a bit sick. Got some water? <laughs> I've just had some help. I felt sorry for Jackie because obviously the, you know, first impressions are so vital in this sort of thing. Everyone's trying to be really proactive and, and Jackie was feeling quite poorly. Ula seemed to have found a natural leader in Nick, but has anyone similar emerged in the Halang tribe? It. Oh, it's a baby! <laughs> baby lobster! <laughs> Must be a crab, mustn't it? Should we keep him as a pet? They all seem to be fannying around. I can't stand meetings for meetings' sake. What are we doing? We've got about two hours, I reckon, till it gets yeah. dark. Yeah. I haven't got time to do everything, so... Shelter's really important. We've got so little time and we've just got to do two things and that's shelter and water. And nobody's gone for water yet and I just... And they've lost the compass. We haven't had it five minutes. I can't go storming around the place saying, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. I can't do that. Lean-to is not right for, for eight people. It's good, but not a lean-to. That's a wobbly one. Some of them are breaking, aren't they? Good song when you've got that. A lean-to is good for two, three people. Not for eight. We should be doing an A-frame. going to hate me. I think a lean-to is wrong. Why? Because we're going to need the cool air from the sea to keep us cool at night. We're going to experience a lot of humidity from the jungle coming into our accommodation. Yeah. A lean-to is excellent if you've got two or three people sleeping in it, but eight, we should have an A-frame. Yeah. What about just for tonight, though? For tonight, it's great. A-frame is going to be more difficult to build than yeah. a lean-to. But then again, you're nearly there. Let's just carry on now because yeah. you've done so much work but I think we've got to change it tomorrow because yeah. we're going to be really... If this happens again, don't just let me carry on and do it. <laughs> but I don't want to be bossing. <laughs> Each tribe has a water hole like this replenished with fresh water every day. Problem is it's at least a 30 minute trek from their base camp so just to fill their canteens they first have to find this water source. That's why they've been given maps and compasses. Where's the compass? Oh, God, don't say we've lost it already. Oh, I think we ought to get water first because the sun is seriously going down now. We'll find the compass later. See you in about three hours. <laughs> so. West. We need to be going in that direction. What we're looking for now is a big fallen tree. We've got a... Well, we've passed one at least, haven't we? This is definitely right, believe me. I believe you. Thousands, wouldn't it? Uh, Show me where the water hole is on the map. 
I'll just see where there's a little path through Go here. Go on then, I'll wait here. See, the thing is, water's not going to be up a hill, it's going to be at the bottom, isn't it? If, in a hole, and that's taking us uphill. But the map tree. might be slightly out. And what we haven't done, we haven't gone up there, have we? Well, that's the huge tree. And it's at 30, it's at 30 paces, and we've done 30 paces. It's just getting denser. And we've got about an hour to get, find it and get back. I, I suggest we just, we go back. Unless you think we ought to go to carry on straight through there. Thirty paces. You see, it's around here. We we we're in touching distance. I'm sure of that. <gasps> Look, it's here. <laughs> we found it. Oh my god. Where oh my it? god, <laughs> is it? <laughs> wow. Well, I think it is. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> well done. Uh, When you're doing it, yeah, put it yeah. in there. Just one the twist. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That protects your hands from getting a blister. And also you can put pressure on it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we had it. We had we, it. There, we, we, we had it. I can see myself here at Christmas with the turkey going, I'm sorry kids, it's just not gonna happen. Mummy can't light the fire. Um, Nightfall descends quickly this close to the equator, so Ula must work fast if they want to make fire before it's dark. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Can't keep it, we're not keeping it going for long. Yeah, it just needs to keep going for a long time. Get the it? rhythm. Yeah. a good night. I mean, bamboo is very hard. Uh, we should have got some bedding down really to make it more comfortable. So we'll do that tonight. And I, I think tonight it'll be better. The thing that really surprised me was uh, the fact that we weren't bothered by mosquitoes at all. Uh, that's probably down to the fact that we had some mosquito netting in our uh, crates that we cracked open. When I was told there'd be rats running around everywhere and snakes, I didn't actually expect to see two or three of each in my first night. It was very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. It was very close to other people. I got up to sit next to Charlotte, kept moving and twitching all night, but uh, elbows in my throat and uh, in my eyes, and she was all right. Well, there's a cockroach still in bed with us. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Do you bring Brandy. Brandy. We've named it. If I don't go to sleep tonight, I'm just going to have to say, take me off before I end up collapsing or something. That's good news. Anybody eat yesterday? No, and I did anybody eat yesterday. Yeah, we had a bit of a corned beef. Yeah, that little bit of corned beef. That's all we had. Yeah, and that is nothing. There's no carbohydrates in there. There's nothing. They're all tired. I'm I'm not too tired because I, I I can sleep on a washing line, but um, we're very we're all very hungry today. Is anybody dizzy? Because uh, I'm dizzy. Not yet. <laughs> well, I'm always well, dizzy. Well, yeah, permanently. <laughs> Hunger pains is something that I haven't really ever experienced. I think we've all been hungry at home, but you get um, a sort of a crunching, um, gnawing feeling in your stomach, and it sort of, um, I wouldn't say it eats away at you, but it's, it's painful. It, it, it's like a shock like this in your stomach, which is constant, constant ache.
probably fishes around there. At the moment I'm finding this quite tough physically. I'm hungry all the time. Mike managed to smuggle some uh, food in last night. Yeah, a couple of sausages and stuff, so we had some of that. I had six and I wrapped them all in uh, in cling film and you can uh, I'm sure you can see where they went. <laughs> size, but when, <laughs> when I got to four, I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't manage any more. <laughs> The really funny thing was, when he told us on the boat he had four sausages with him, when we actually got on land and he got the sausages out from wherever he got them, um, he could only find three. <laughs> so, so we're just really hoping that in a couple of weeks' time he finds the other sausage if we're really hungry. Yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll just push the A-frame that way this morning. Do you want me to splint it while I'm up here? No, we're going to put a, a whole new bamboo yeah. run. Okay. One of the strongest influences in helping me to move forward has been a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah, it's something I just have to keep on going back to and going back to. Yeah, I use it in my daytime work, obviously on the management side, but for that you can actually learn a lot about dealing with people in difficult situations and find out what their motivations are. And I, I must admit that has helped me so much. Just above my head, near my arm. Yeah. Yeah, see the big bamboo? Yeah. Okay, unfortunately that's cracked. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to splint one across, carry that along, and put our second A-frame here. So also just remember that we have to build between the flags. Yeah. Well, that's the end. Put the flags over there, between the flags. The security yeah. side nothing's, of it. Nothing's going to fall on us. Well. It'll be good, it'll be good. Yeah, the reason why the flags are here is because of trees falling down. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying, though. That's, it's been put here for a purpose. Yeah. So maybe it doesn't need to be moved. Yeah, let's do that. Use that as a limit. It's enough for another four bods, isn't it? Okay. Cigarette lights have been washed up. And there's fuel in it. No. Well, is that legitimate? Look at that. It's got fuel in, yeah? Got a hermit crab in as well, gone. Excellent. Do you need cleaning out? Top scavenge. Is that, is that muck in there? Been in the water there. I think it's just pretty good. No, no, but he's got to get all this sand out of it. That's cleared it. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Go down the We don't know, we're just cleaning it out. I'm getting any spark on I don't think there's a lot of spark in it. So we get a truck because it'll slip out your hand. Yeah, you should use it as a pot. What do you mean it's dying? Of course it's dying. Come kill it. 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 Come kill Yes, it is. It is dead. No, it's not dead. No. Are we still gobbling him up? Should we, should we like... He's gonna... I can't get him in there. What are you gonna put him in there for? Well, because so we can leave it in the sea. Rope right it in the sea. Right, look, let, let's just put it... Let's get put it in the top here. Put it in that one. Yeah. Put it in that yeah, one. Put it in that one. one. Yeah. I'm not having cruelty. Dies, what do you mean if he's gonna live? What are you, what are you no, gonna do? No, we can't bear this. Just keep him alive. I think we've either gotta kill it quickly or... No, put he's going in a minute. He's going in there. We are not putting him back in the sea. He's bait for something bigger. Charlotte, are you hungry? I am hungry, but I don't. I don't mind killing the fish to eat, but I don't want it going through like Charlotte. pain. Charlotte, what? Well, look at it. It's bashing yeah, against the rock. Listen, I'd never are... stop anyone eating, and I knew it was going to die. Yeah. But now we've let it die slowly and in pain. I think that's wrong. Well, you know, I was, I was... You don't believe this. Richard was down there by the shore 
and a lighter washed up. <laughs> Honestly, a gas lighter. It's the most stunning piece of luck I think we've probably ever had. Um, we were just standing down by the beach and uh, Richard just spotted a, a gas cigarette lighter being washed up. Um, it was half full, it was a bit uh, craggy to start with, uh, but Peter um, washed it out and put some sort of oil in it to lubricate it and uh, we, we lost one bit of flint out of it uh, and then with a few more flicks we got a flame. Ula are lucky too with the splash over pool that's formed behind their shelter, trapping much needed food, some edible, some not. And a snake! <laughs> <laughs> What kind of snake are these then? Pulled the net then. <laughs> its head moved. <laughs> Did it work? Uh, it's at least bucket. 15. <laughs> and yes! And two and snakes! Two snakes, look. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, that's not nice. That's not nice. Are these venomous, these ones? Anyone know? This will ignite, it's like sawdust. Yeah. If we could get the eye of so please. Um, I'm going to have a drink of water. Oh, what I'm about here? That, did we have some oil, love? Well, what was in that? Kerosene, yeah, but that's for cooking. Once you've got the friction, then you put the kerosene onto the fire to make it whoop go. Right. But it won't. No? No. Um, I'm going to have a drink of water because I'm really dizzy. We can cook our food on here, people. If you want to eat, we can cook on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Auntie, we need you, Wake please. Wake up, rousing. There's kerosene. There's please, fuel there, yeah. Kerosene, kerosene, or what? Catching. Can we get some like wood? Oh my god! Go, go, go. Someone go find the Caroline! Someone please find the Caroline! We're going to do the lamp. There's no Caroline. There you go. Stop. I had, a, I had a feeling today was going to be a good day. You always do, darling, don't you? <laughs> Today was a fantastic day. A survivor. This sand spit is the location for the first immunity challenge. Behind me, is Snake Island, whose inhabitants include the white-bellied sea eagle and the banded sea snake, two creatures locked in perpetual conflict and who have provided the inspiration for our tribal names. Halang, the Malay word for eagle, Ula, the word for snake. The tribes have been given a few days grace to settle into the island, but after tribal council tomorrow, their lives take on a three-day cycle. On day one is the reward challenge, where the winning tribe can receive something to make their lives a little easier on the island. On day two is the immunity challenge, like the one today, where the losers join me at tribal council tomorrow evening and vote one of their members off the island. Every day the survivors will face new hazards and dangers. Their camp may be rat and snake infested. They may be racked with hunger. But there's no doubt in this game the biggest threat to them is the vote at tribal council. Their very existence on the island depends on it. Although we're really confident about winning the challenge, I think in the back of the mind, everybody's mind is, well, if we lose, who's going to go? So uh, people are putting feelers out. I'm strongly ignoring at the moment. What we've been looking at the last couple of days, or the last day, is who, first off, who in the team we trust, yeah. and also works well under pressure. Yeah. And we kind of fit that quite well. And what I'm looking at doing is putting together a group of five people. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, you understand why, don't you? Yeah. Should you decide that's what you want to do, is it? 
it's yeah. the only way to go forward. It, yeah, yeah. obviously. Plan anyway. Right, first off, there's Mick. Yeah, he's got his age behind him. I believe he's a trustworthy character. There's a policeman. There's Pete. Yeah, young guy, very athletic, very switched on as well. Yeah. There's you. Yeah. yeah. There's myself. Fifth one, still debating, and I welcome any thoughts from yourself. Yeah. My gut reaction is Eve at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what's been said for the others as well. Yeah. yeah. It's nice we all think the same way. We'll watch what happens over the next 24 hours. We'll have a word with Eve. Invite her in. If she doesn't, fair enough. If anyone else approaches you, yeah, can you let myself know and the other guys know? Right, we have to be absolutely bulletproof. Happy? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you blisters. Have. <laughs> I'll let you have your wee now. I'll go to Jimmy Riddle. Don't watch. All right. <laughs> I probably wasn't going to be the one to instigate an alliance, but I sure as hell was going to join it if I felt it was strong enough, and I do feel it's strong enough. If this game is going to be won by any of us, it's going to, the, the alliance is going to have to start now, so it's rock solid. on so well together and there's certainly no friction and I, I was expecting that before I came over so we're extremely lucky and it's sort of happening quite naturally I don't think any of us are uh, or I hope none of us are working too hard at it so you know if things do get tough and all the facade breaks down of the nice personality um, there won't be too many nasty surprises underneath it's the same thing yeah which I just think she's been really nasty, and I think we could do without that. Yeah. You know, even somebody who um, who's not pulling their weight enough, I'd prefer them than somebody who's going to be really bitchy. I thought, like, was it me? Because I was trying to, I, I was trying to help out, to putting out the mats and things. I was, I was just trying to help, and I she know. just said, "Oh, you are a funny little man." I know. Thought, so I went away. And I was thinking, you know, she's oh, maybe I am. Maybe I'm well, trying she to help. She said, Miss Blue Toenails. She didn't. She did not. She did. And something else and she said about it. Have you killed your She eyes. said, yes, what have you done? Why are your eyelashes curly? Why are your eyebrows so dark? I said, well, I haven't dyed, actually. And then she, said, said, she said about your colouring. Yes, yeah, she oh. said, oh, have you been on what, holiday What then? kind of colour are you? What, you can't naturally be that colour. You go for a dip. There is that possibility that we yeah. lose the challenge. Yeah, you are absolutely right to think that. You're absolutely right to think that, and it's, you've got to think of everything, because otherwise... You I don't want to get there to the tribal council and think, oh, shit, who am I voting yeah, on? Oh, right, I don't know yeah. what... Right. And me, James and Charlotte are agreed on the person we want on. Right. And, the, and there are so reasons we need, for it. we need, we need... You really need me to tell you, do you? Well, you don't have to tell us. You I've may decided. go. I've decided, I've decided. Go on. I'm not saying, I've just oh, decided. Oh, OK, so you're not telling us. I've decided. No, but I don't <laughs> want them to have the satisfaction. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So the big question, which of the two groups of strangers has bonded sufficiently as a tribe to win the first challenge? Welcome to your first immunity challenge. This is the immunity idol. This could well be the most precious thing you could have here because this will extend your life on the island. If you win it, you're guaranteed at least another three days. If you lose it, then you'll join me tomorrow at Tribal Council and one of you will be voted off the island. When you come to Tribal Council, you will see that fire represents life on this island. Behind me is the Malaysian fire spirit, Samanyat Api. This challenge is all about fire. Here's what you have to do. There are two rafts about 150 foot out to sea. You have to bring those rafts back, lighting every torch along the way. If you fail to light even one torch, you will be disqualified. When you get back, you also have to light your side of the Malaysian fire spirit. Is that clear? Yeah. Then swim to your raft. 
The challenge begins when both tribes reach their respective rafts, which each weigh more than 200 pounds. I said at the introduction that if you failed to light even one torch, you would be disqualified. Ula, you failed to light one torch. Milan so, has immunity idol, and you will see me tomorrow at Tribal Council. Survivor. I think the disappointment yesterday with, you know, being uh, stripped of our win um, has actually calmed us all down a little bit. As opposed to yesterday, we were all a bit hyper and, yeah, yeah, we're indestructible. You know, we're a little sort of bit more reflective this morning of like, okay, this is a serious game now and things aren't always going to go our way. Well, I haven't particularly performed well up until now. I had that first night incident where I was sort of like, not very good, a bit of a weakling. I think I've, I've got better over the past couple of days, but somebody's got to go and I think the boys are doing a boys versus girls and, uh, and so that would be me. 
Jack is, is for some reason starting to become demoralised. I don't know why. I think he may be accepted. It's probably going to go. Because it's going to get harder. So then we have to make a decision now, don't we? Right. That's Jackie. Jackie. Okay. Jackie, I'm going to leave because of So we're settled. Yeah, I'll approach him. Okay. I've got the lines going with Jackie already. Um, how strong two people will be, I don't know. So at the moment, we all get on well, no. apart from Nick. Nick is a strong influence and he's very capable and he's got a lot of skills. Yeah. But he's not giving anybody else a chance because he's so dominating that to, to break that, you've got to be really controversial and cause an argument. Yeah. I think he sees me as a threat. Yeah. I think that it's either going to be Nick or me, so I'm definitely going to vote Nick. <laughs> This is the island's tribal council, where every three days, someone will be voted off the island. Last night, Ula lost the immunity challenge, so tonight, they're coming here, where they will vote off the first person. Just to get here, they have to trek through this jungle, but if they feel vulnerable about that, it's nothing compared to how they'll feel when they're sitting here tonight. And there are three certainties about tribal council. You are held accountable for your actions, there will be a vote, and someone is going home. Who that someone will be, nobody knows for certain. So they must take all their belongings with them on the one hour trek to tribal council. And on the way, they pass the island's active mud volcano. Take your torches. You take your torches and gather round the fire. Dip them into the flame, light the torches and replace them on the stands and take your seats at the tribal council. begin with this ritual because as I told you yesterday fire represents your life on this island now the bad news is that for one of you your flame will be extinguished tonight so it's not a great place to be this evening but before we get to the vote let's just discuss a few things Zoe tell me what was the mood like after you lost the immunity challenge what was the mood like when you got back to your camp we've decided to put that one behind us and um... We were a trifle gutted <laughs> because we put in a huge effort. Momentarily despondent, but by no means beaten. Michael, apart from yourself, whose loss do you think would most damage the tribe? Um, I'm going to go for Nick, actually. Um, he has uh, quite a number of skills. I've got similar skills, but I, I feel his, his skills are uh, in advance of mine. Right, what I'd like you to do now is to vote. Could you start the voting, please? somebody um, we're gonna win the uh, next immunity I think uh, this is the person we can most afford to lose this is nothing personal I'm just really really sorry to do this to you come for Jackie 
not really anything you have done or you haven't done. It's just that we have to look at protecting the tribe to make sure the strongest we possibly can be for the next events. Sorry, Jackie. He doesn't say please, he doesn't say thank you. Three votes for Nick and three votes for Jackie. Nick. Nick. Nick, could you fetch your torch and bring it to the stand, please? As I said yesterday, Nick, fire represents your life on this island. I'm afraid your life on this island has come to an end. Could you extinguish your flame, please? The tribe has spoken, Nick, you must leave. of you congratulations you survived your first tribal council could you collect your torches return to your camp and i'll see you tomorrow My life off the island um, did take over at places and I got you know, mixed up in the adventure rather than concentrating on the end point, which was to win the million pounds. I'd like to phone Nick off because the other t members of the team and I can't let our fires burn while he's on the island because he's such a control freak. Yeah, I may have pushed people too hard at several stages, um, but for me it was to get life as comfortable as possible as soon as possible. Your dictatorial approach is stifling the rest of the tribe and not letting our strengths come out. The last day or so, I began to let people do their own thing more and more. If it had been up to me, we would have done an awful lot more and we would have been even you know, more comfortable. Because I believed him to be a threat to my existence on the island. The, uh, the person I feel um, was actually a turncoat, who was Richard. Sorry, mate. 
You took a little bit too much control too early. You were weaving quite a tangled web. Don't trust anybody. Nick left the machete on board the Matahari. During the immunity challenge, he failed to light the torch, which cost his tribe dearly. We are going to build a field plan. He attempted to take control too early, which upset the rest of the tribe. Consequently, he was the first to be voted off the island. Join us tomorrow evening for Nick's story. On the next episode of Survivor, Halang find their camp washed away. The immunity challenge sees both tribes head to head in the jungle. Ula find an unwelcome guest in their midst. And knowing both tribes require food, we decide to serve luncheon. Whether they eat it or not is up to them. Still protected in your McLean's Complete Care Toothpaste. Sponsor Survivor.